Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it the bears just warming up. And I, I say that, I make that statement because of the Elliott wave count and the sentiment that I'm seeing. And it just seems like things are just now warming up. So we're going to we're going to find out here pretty soon, I think. We're going to start off and take a look at the um, side by side view of the Dow Industrials, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq Composite. Look at the industrials versus the transports. Drill down, look at the LA Wave picture on the industrials. I want to look at the McClellan oscillator and the put-to-call ratio, the equity put-to-call ratio. And then we're going to take a look at 12-month oil and XLE, the energy ETF. All right, here's the, uh, the Dow. The Dow was uh, down two points for the week. The S&P 500 was minus 27 and the NASDAQ composite minus 177. The interesting thing about the S&P 500 and the composite is this little Harami type pattern uh, that we've got both showing up here and in the, uh, the uh, NASDAQ composite. Now I talked about a couple of weeks ago, I talked about this Harami right here on the Dow Industrials. Well, it didn't materialize, did it? it you know, the, next, the next week, they broke the high of the range of that week, did not take out the low. You know, so, you know, whenever you see a pattern like this, just like what we're seeing right now, let me get rid of the crosshairs for a minute, just like what we're seeing right here and right here, this is a potential setup. The setup, you know, in order to make this happen, we need to see this take out last week's low and start to break down. Just kind of like right here with this beautiful Harami that occurred back here on the week of August 14th. And, you know, we broke down below the low that week and then took out, you know, that low, the, the prior week low, and we're on our way to the downside. Uh, so we'll see what happens in here. There's a lot of things that are lining up right now. Uh, let's go take a look at the Dow Industrials and the Dow Transports. These are still in sync. You can see I talked about how the Dow was down two points. Well, look at the transports down 300 points this week. So big, strong move. Again, are we getting something uh, like this? I mean, here's, here's a perfect, you know, Harami type pattern too. But notice it did break the high, but then it also took out the low and then it closed down here and you know headed south so we'll see what happens uh with this coming uh week and uh, and the week after but um you know and we're gonna have a holiday shortened week this week right uh, three and a half days of trading closed on friday for or thursday for thanksgiving and then they close early on friday one o'clock eastern time 12 o'clock central time okay so this is the uh the dow industrials versus the transports let's go take a look at the uh the industrials. Here's the Elliott Wave picture I've got, and this is my preferred count. The preferred count says that this intermediate wave two has gone sideways and created a large flat, a big A, B, C flat in terms of how deep this has gone. We've retraced almost right up to the uh, wave A high, the August high in here. We didn't quite get there. So if we turn down, if Tuesday was indeed the high on the market. And it could be that on the S&P 500 and, and you know all the indices. If that, this was the high, this could turn into what I view as a running flat, which you know B went below the start of A, C did not get back to the end of A. Uh, and if that's the case, that's an indication that the next move should be fairly strong. And that's exactly what we'd expect for a third wave to the downside. And we're looking at the third intermediate wave. Now, the alternate count would say in here that, OK, this is still potentially minor two of three. Uh, and this is still a valid scenario as long as we don't come back and take out this, uh, this high right here, the August high. You know, that's the only way of rule. The only way of rule is wave two is still valid. It just cannot go beyond the start of wave one. Okay, and you know, and, it, and that's, that's troublesome for many uh, because you look and say, well, okay, you know, it, it can go deep and deep and deep and, you know, come all the way back up here and it can. 
so we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I, I'm going to leave this as the alternate. I'm going to stick with this as the preferred, you know, because it does look like this whole move has been a sideways type crunch. Now, I want to just point something out on the S&P 500, and I want to go back over to this scenario right here. The interesting thing about this, here's that Tuesday high again, November 15th, okay? Um, I've got this. This is a deep retracement, 61.8%. And that's the other thing that I look at this and say, well, we got a deep retracement of two versus one in here on the S&P 500. So we're already in that zone that says we've pulled back deep. OK, so it makes me think and given how deep we've gone with the Dow Industrials, there's not either we've, we're already there and the high is in or we're within days of it. OK, and so. That's what I look at when I see and you know, I, I compare where things are at. Now, the Nasdaq's been very, very shallow. The other thing I was going to point out here on the uh, on the S&P 500 is look at the number of days in here. If you count this low and count the days to the high, that's 24 trading days. You come back over here to minor two of the first intermediate wave. And we're in minor two of the third intermediate wave. Minor two of the first 24 trading days from the low to the high on the S&P 500. So kind of an interesting timing coincidence, 24 days exactly from low to high. We got a deep retracement in here. So the timing and everything seems to be lining up. Uh, we'll see what we get. So that is the picture with the Dow Industrials. Let's go back. I'm going to go back to the Dow. Here's the moving average view that we've got. We're definitely getting divergence showing up in here. Uh, we're getting it, you know, just so you can see. And I use our 10 day RSI. We're getting the same picture on DI plus and DI minus. Look how this did not continue to weaken as the price is pushed higher. So we're getting divergence, divergence, divergence on the indicators, okay? And you know, and honestly, when it comes to indicators, I know all of you've got probably got your favorite, but um, I have learned over the years to keep it as simple as you can possibly keep it. Believe me, you know, long time ago, I mean, as, as you're trying to figure out what you're comfortable with, what's what works, et cetera, you know, you could have, I, I remember having, you know, five or six indicators down here and all it does is create confusion. So I've learned to keep it simple. Okay, so this is, uh, this is where we're at with the Dow Industrials. I want to take a look at the McClellan Oscillator. Okay, the McClellan Oscillator is sitting at, let me see if I can get it to give me the number in here. I think it's like plus 72. So we're slightly overbought. We've come down from this extremes when you're above the red dash red line plus 150. You're in severely overbought. And when you're down here well below minus 150, you're in severely oversold. So we've been bouncing around with severely overbought just like we did at the end of July into mid-August. And now we're starting to break down out of this. Are we going to get a break below zero coming up? That's what I'll be watching for, that we break below the zero line and that the selling pressure starts kicking in. So the next thing I want to look at is the put to call ratio. OK, on Friday, the put to call ratio was 0.64. And I'm talking about equity put to call. So there were 64 puts for every 100 calls. The 10 day at 0.79, when, it, when that 10 day gets at 0 0.80 and above, I start to color it light green. Over here on the one day, when it gets in the 90s, I color it a darker green and above one, I color it the darkest uh, color of green. OK, so you can see there hasn't been a whole lot of bearish sentiment activity going on throughout this entire year. OK, nothing until just now where the bears are warming up. OK, and believe me, when you, you know, you look at the other extreme and you're talking about the bullish extreme that has, you know, 
accumulated into 2021 and into the early 2022. I mean, look at the, the bullish extreme that was going on in 21. I mean, it's just incredible. And when you go back, you remember the December 2020 and into January 2021. Oh, my gosh. The type of put to call ratios that we were getting was like something I'd never seen before. OK, and when was that? That was when the whole AMC, GameStop, all that crazy stuff that was going on was occurring and the extreme in bullish sentiment was occurring. Well, where's the where's the uh, where's the bearish sentiment? My I'm going to I'm going to say that we're going to see the similar type of bearish sentiment before this bear market is done that we've seen in bullish sentiment. OK, and let's just go back and take a look at 2008, for example. OK, here's September 2008. OK, this was, you know, just starting to get warmed up in here in terms of the put to call ratios, equity put to call ratios. And then we move into October. And then we move into November. OK, and you could see it just was intensifying. OK, we're, we're not seeing anything like that just yet. And then we got another dose in January and it almost looks like it's starting to maybe, you know, uh, wear itself out to a certain degree less in February. And where did the market bottom in March? Here's where the market bottomed, the low of two, March 2009. So. We haven't seen any of this kind of uh, sentiment activity at this point. So I just think the bears are just going, are get, getting going right now. And uh, if we get into this wave three, minor wave three of intermediate wave three, things are going to intensify. All right, I want to take a look at the um, USL, which is the 12 month oil, United States 12 month oil. OK, I like looking at this after we had some issues a couple of years ago with USO. So I stay with this. The, the wave count I've got here is this is what I've got on on USL. This is a weekly view. I'm thinking that we've got a little bit more to go to come down here co to correct this five wave move up from the low over here in April 2020. But I think we had five waves up and now we're correcting. And so when you look at this and say, well, OK, well, what kind of correction? Again, I've got the semi log off right now. Let me get this to work here. Um, come on. OK, let's go to here. It's not working. I'll pull it up. OK, here we go. I'm doing it on the daily. <laughs> I was trying to do it on the weekly for whatever reason it wasn't accommodating me. Here's what I'm looking at. OK, from the low to the high, a 50% retracement is back down here to 27.48. Now, when I'm looking at the primary waves in here, the prior fourth wave primary wave is down like down in here. Well, that would mean a, a deep retracement of 61.8 percent. We'll see what we get. You know, one wave structure at a time. I'm just going to be watching this thing continue to come down right now. I'm looking at this as an ending diagonal pattern. Remember when you're in a C wave of a zigzag A, B and C, a C wave can either be an impulse or an ending diagonal type pattern. OK, so right now it seems to be playing out as, a, as an ending diagonal type pattern. So uh, we'll see if we get the continuation down here for wave three. Uh, but that's what we're looking at with USL. Let's take a look at uh, XLE. OK, here's a longer term chart of XLE. It goes back about four years or so. Um, here's the big bottom that occurred in March of 2020. But then when it after rallying and it came back down, this looked like a five wave move to me. It looked like a truncated fifth wave. So I called the end of this big C wave. I called that ending right here in October of 2020. So right now I've got this as five waves up for primary wave one. And then then I'm looking at it and saying, well, what do we have been what have we been doing here? since June of 2022, okay, earlier this year. This is what it looks like. So I think we've got a big corrective pattern going on. I just don't think we've gotten very deep at this point. This doesn't look 
like a completed uh, uh, pattern in here. I think counting this as five waves for A. So right now, A, B, and C, I would look for the C wave to come down. Is it going to go 50%? Is it just going to come back down here to the end of wave A? We'll see what kind of wave structure we get. But this is what I'm looking at. I think, uh, you know, the oil stocks have had a heck of a run. We'll see if we come back and correct a little bit more in here. Uh, but that's the way XLE looks to me right now. And I'm seeing similar type thing when I look at some of the... Uh, the oil stocks. So that is the picture I've got. And it kind of it syncs with what I'm seeing on USL also. So um, that's it for now on XLE. We'll see what kind of follow through we get to the downside. Okay, if you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a daily basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website and the membership. Everyone have a great week and happy Thanksgiving to everyone celebrating Thanksgiving this coming week.